Police say it was early this morning when a woman on her way home saw a man violently attacking Nellie Pelt on the side of this road before running over her with his car. Guys, it is quiet now here at Northwest 30th and Western, but police say when they arrived here just before 8 o'clock tonight, it was absolute chaos. Elton John and Billy Joel are scheduled to play the Ford Center next Thursday, but it's not the music people are talking about. It's the fact that Elton John says Jesus was gay. This is it, the worst case scenario. Just devastating destruction all around. And if you come up on something like this, you're going to want to help, but... Do you even know where to start or how to make sure that you're not a victim yourself? As it turns out, to respond to the worst, you need help from the best. This all began with a police chase and then turned into a drive-by shooting involving an officer and finally ended just down the street in a deadly shootout. Police say this all got started several blocks south of here when an officer tried to pull over a car near Northeast 13th and Kellum. Arson investigators are on the scene out here trying to determine what started this fire. The district chief says that is standard procedure anytime there's a fire this large. It wasn't that long ago that phones were a major faux pas when it came to church, but now more and more people are feeling free to use their mobile devices to dial in to a higher power. At Riggs, they train crews to use the simplest of machines to do the most good, like just a simple pry bar and a full pump. You get it close enough, and just one person can lift this 2,000-pound block halfway. I just got word that this book signing has officially wrapped up. I saw the last people in line just walk out with their autographed copies of Going Rogue and was just told that Sarah Palin headed out the back of this Hastings in Norman and is back on the tour bus, headed to her next stop. But all in all, she probably signed close to a 1,000 autographs for some very eager Oklahomans, many of whom waited all night long for a chance to meet their political hero and to pass along an important message from Oklahoma Republicans. So I'm along Hiawassee Road, just north of Reno now, to give you a little perspective on where I'm at. This is kind of the dividing line between Midwest City over here and then Choctaw over here. And firefighters have been out in this area for the past three days and all afternoon as well, putting out wildfires and flare-ups. And tonight, all the firefighters say they hope they can finally get some rest. Nellie's family says they have no idea why she was outside of the church so early in the morning. They describe her, though, as a night owl and says she was probably on her way home after a late-night shopping trip. Guys, it was Monday night here in Dolisi Youth Park that someone says they were out walking their dog and spotted a four-foot alligator in, in these murky waters. And now the people who use this park say they're keeping a closer eye on the wildlife. Uh, about 10 o'clock at night, they said it was about three or four feet long. It's swimming back and forth and uh, slap its tail on top of the water. Is Dolisi Youth Park turning into a land down under? We come up here not too often, but I've never seen anything like that. Brent Lunt brings his boys to play at Dolisi and never thought a gator could be lurking just a few feet from the playground. Be a nice snack. The wildlife department says if there is a gator here, it was likely once someone's illegal pet that got too big. Is that something that I hear? That makes sense. I mean, but this is, I mean, this is a playground. That's kind of that's dangerous. You'd think they'd drop it off out further where there's not, no population. Wildlife officials say gators do live in Oklahoma, but aside from these scaly fellows at the zoo, no gators are found this far north. Gators are cold-blooded animals, uh, and in the wintertime, they just they don't do too well. Still, most people aren't taking any chances. I don't get close to the water, <laughs> and I don't like them down there either. I think it, it could be here, just somebody let a little pet go and all of a sudden, you know, mm -hmm. grows to something decent sorry. So. Would it be okay if we use one of your dogs as, as, as bait to see if we can lure Oh, no. That? No. You can't do that? <laughs> Not in a heartbeat. So we couldn't find any live bait, so it's the next best thing. Let's see what we can find. Here, gator, 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 gator. Here, gator, 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 gator. We haven't seen anything uh, other than the eyewitness accounts to make us believe there, there would be a gator out there. There are geese, but no gators. A mallard, but no monster. So what could it have been? To me, that, that behavior is very indicative of a beaver. Wildlife officials say while beavers don't look much like gators out of the water, in the water, in the dark, who knows? If you do see one, call us, and we'll, we'll send our professional guys who are trained out there to take a look at it. The Department of Wildlife Conservation says they will continue to monitor the situation out here at Delisi Park, but they say with the temperatures continuing to drop, if there is a gator out here, it's likely it won't survive the winter. Dozens of fire departments from all over the state were rushing to help out with the major county fire. Last night it burned hundreds of acres before firefighters thought they had it under control. 
but it turns out this fire was just getting started. Yeah. It's really throwing out smoke here, too. Where there's smoke, there's fire. There's about four major fires right now. Uh, last night, it was kind of in one big group. Last night, Jim Slater got lucky. So we've kind of been surrounded. He managed to corral most of his cattle behind a temporary fire break. So there's a fire decides to come on down this canyon while we can uh, we can have them where we can get them out of here the fire stopped less than a mile from the farm but this morning well, i woke up and grandpa was all like we got to get back out there that fire started again wind has changed it's kind of splintered and the firefighters are having a uh, awful time trying to keep up with all of it here's the reason why this fire has been so difficult to contain this entire area of major county is filled with these ravines and gulches which makes it practically impossible for firefighters to get men and equipment in to put water on the fire. Got a lot of valleys, a lot of hills, a lot of drop-offs. No one, no one getting hurt. So, and it's hot, very hot. Uh, it gets pretty warm whenever the cedars are burning. The Logan County Task Force brought six different departments to relieve major county crews. Everybody's going to refill and go to Fort Boyle. Battling the ever-growing wildfire. So we're kind of running both ends of it, both flanks of it, just trying to get it knocked down hoping to get a handle on the fire before it destroys even more. Not seen one this big before this close. I don't want to see it again because it's just loss of money and it's stuff you don't need. Just to put in perspective how intense this fire was, it was officially 106 today in Major County, but Jim Slater says when he drove with just within a mile of the fire, the temperature in his truck read 130 degrees, and when he got closer to the flames, it went past 200 degrees. On any given night in the metro, there are more than 200 veterans on the streets without a home and with no one to grieve when they die. It's a somber reminder of a problem that veteran advocates say is not going away. Leon J. Sherman was an American fighting man. A man who lived without a family. Though most of us did not know Leon Sherman, we knew him in service, and therefore we knew him as a brother. Dies surrounded by brothers. Leon Sherman served in the Army for more than a decade, but his final days found him living on the streets of Oklahoma City. He would be so surprised and so um, appreciative of everything that's been done on his behalf because he really had no one. So this is, this is very special. The VA Hospital's Homeless Outreach Program tries to find and help veterans like Sherman. Our veterans fought for our right to choice, and we find that so many of them out there don't even know what their choices are. The VA Hospital says many returning veterans struggle with addiction and mental health issues. Life on the streets is the only way some know how to cope. That's the whole focus of our outreach is to go out and find those people and connect with them and, and uh, connect them with the resources that they need. Sherman needed a family. It's very emotional. I mean, that you, I mean, I took it personally that I could come and ask, ask his family. He got far more than that, a family to grieve and fellow soldiers to give him the dignity and depth he did not have in his final days of life. I wish I could put into words how I feel. Uh, to honor our veterans is probably the, the most humble thing that, that, that uh, I could do in my life. Putting names faces and stories to homeless heroes in hopes there will soon be no need for programs like this. The more that we, that, that we, we talk about it, the more organizations we get involved, uh, the more awareness there, there, there comes of the, of the problem and hopefully we'll be, we'll be part of the solution. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee his peace. Amen. This was the first ceremony for Dignity Memorial's Homeless Veterans Burial Program in Oklahoma City. Leon Sherman's remains will be interned at the Fort Sill National Cemetery.